Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so we're going to continue on. This is the part two of that one we did the color wheel. So right down here is my color wheel, still wet, so I just put it off here onto the side of this thing here. And I can use that to, to, uh, to look at it. Now, you see, I can see here, if I lightened up some of these colors that are right in here, I can see that beach and I can see some of these rocks and stuff like that right in here, maybe a little bit more green, you know, so you'll be able to find colors. You'll be able to start to see them uh, in those in those areas and and that's what I want you to start looking for. So making that color wheel kind of starts to tune your eye to seeing some of the different, what we call hues. The color around the wheel is called hues. When we use that value scale that I showed you over here before, which I really kind of should uncover here for everyone here. Let's just move that over a bit here. That value scale, this is the value, the lightness and darkness of the color. As it goes in and out of the wheel, whether it's coming that grayness and stuff, that's the intensity of the color, the grayness of a color. So you have value, light and dark, you have hue, what color it is, and you have the intensity, which is the grayness. Okay, let's have some fun. So on the board, this is a regular board here, um, and I think it's like 16 by uh, about eight or so, this board here. You can use any size of board, just as long as it's a little wide, a little bit, uh, longer than it is wider. That's what we call a landscape. So it's gonna, it's gonna, ma uh, you know, kind of match the landscape feeling that my photo is gonna have here. So just a, you know, so somewhere around, you know, two times longer than it is, you know, high or something like that would work fine. This is a quarter inch uh, sheet of wood. Uh, I, um, what we call a five layer ply. You can use hardboard or anything like that. I like to use wood. You can use canvas, but I like to use wood because it's a smooth surface for me to get a bunch of different looks on. And then I gave it a coat of one coat of what we call the canvas prep medium. And if you don't have that, you can just give it a coat of white paint. I don't like to use gessos or anything like that because gessos repel uh, water a, a bit, and I don't like to do that. These are matte surfaces so that they absorb water a little bit so I can get some different looks to it. And then I sand, I let that dry, and I sand it with 180 grit sandpaper, and off we go. Now... For the photo, when we look at the photo and stuff that we have here, the reference photo, we'll come down and, and it's really good. And artists usually, you know, measure with the end of their brush that you come down and you go this way and you go this way. So you're looking right here. If I do this and then I do that, you're looking about a third of the way down on on the board. So, you know, you can do basically the same type of thing as come down here and measure a third, or you can just eyeball it, you know, what is going to be a, about of the third of the way down, because that's going to give us our horizon uh, line onto it. So I would just come in here and just say, okay, about a third of the way down or so, right in there, that's going to give me a nice the nice horizon line. So it's, I'm looking at that line that's right there. So that's the horizon, okay? And so I know I've got a third up here and I've got two thirds or so, and right, you know, of I've got about two thirds here to do the, the majority of the painting. Now, you can draw a line across, and what I do is I just use a little square that I make. This is what you see me do in so many different things, is you can draw a line across here like this and that becomes the mark there for your horizon line. And some artists will go out and they'll use painter's tape and put painter's tape onto that. And uh, then you can use that to, you know, give yourself a, a good starting point, nice clean edge. I like to use, a, do it a little bit differently. You do whatever you like. All of them works. There's artists that do a beautiful job with, with both. The, a, a real clean line, like what you're going to see over there in, in that, a real clean line is going to take you a little bit closer to realism. But I like to blur the line slightly, like I told you on other things, because that gives me a little bit more visual depth into my painting. So what I do is I use my little square and a brush, okay? But first, what we have to do is find find the... the uh, the sky color that we have here on this painting. So we'll take this over and we'll find that sky color. So in the last video, I looked, I'm just going to use some water here. And I do have out the extender medium that we I introduced you to in that last video, the, or the, uh, the flowers and stuff. And some nice dirty water here that I haven't cleaned yet. Okay, and we'll pull out a couple paper towels. Always have lots of paper towels around. So I use those a lot. 
Okay, so I'll pull those out. Now, what what we did in the last video, I was seeing this, maybe a little bit of violet over here, but more towards a blue-green. So if we have that water's edge there, and sometimes you can just add a little white to it here so you can help see the color. It's very difficult sometimes to see the color in sort of the darks. But, and so just adding a little bit, just step off to the side, add a little bit of white so you can see actually what that color is. And that'll, uh, you know, that will give you a better look. So maybe a little bit of violet, but you can see this is pretty close to what you're seeing right in there. It could be a tone just a bit, but, you know, really I see it like right in there. And so that might be a real good color, maybe a little bit of violet right in here, but it is not the sky. See, it's it's more of a blue-green to the sky. So what we really need to paint the sky is a little bit of our violet. So let's add just a tiny touch of our violet and into that sky. And that's the color you're going to see into the sky here. And that's a normal thing that happens. Usually the water is just a little bit more blue-green and the sky is just a little bit more blue-violet. That's... Now, that doesn't happen all the time. You can't say that because of the different times of the day. But on a midday painting like this, that, that happens quite a bit. So then what we'll do is you'll see here, this is when you're working with, a, uh, with the sky, you'll see it's a little darker at the top and a little lighter around the horizon line. And those of you that take color theory and, and landscape painting with me, I talked to you about the atmospherics. It has to do with water vapor in, in the... Uh, in the atmosphere and what causes that lightening up of it along the horizon line and so and that's what's called the horizon line so it lightens up so and then it gets just a, a value or so darker here in this because the sky isn't so high if they if it continued on up it would get darker 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 so what I do is I hold it over to the scale there and I see that that is really an eight or a nine Okay, it's light, that blue is lighter than what's down here at the 5, and it's lighter, 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 and it becomes real close to a 9. So we need a 9, 8 or a 9. I would probably mix up real close to a 9 because acrylics dry a little darker. Okay, so there, and then the top of this is, there's a 7. It's a real close to a 7, probably dries down to a 6. So the top of that looks pretty close to here. It's a pretty close right in here five or a six so we'll put a nine down and we'll go right into a five or a six or something right there at the top does that make sense so now we have a plan so we'll take our white here okay we'll take our blue here okay a little bit of blue and a little bit of that violet into that so we make that blue violet here okay and you can do this real wet into wet, or you can uh, use just water. I, a lot of times I like to use just water. For the first part of this, I'm just going to push this right along the, the horizon line here. Now, this is closer to what I'm going to need up at the top, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, I'm just going to put some color down. I'm going to get started in painting here and I like to do this I like I don't like to use very long long strokes because you know it that's just too perfect I like this this creates the atmosphere in the sky and so I'll do that I'll create some of that right in here scrub it a little bit sometimes you know when I model colors like maybe a little bit of that phthalo comes out there so it gives you a a better atmosphere you'll see me in a lot of landscapes do this kind of stuff now we don't want to this is our practice we're you know for those of you that are beginners and stuff like this this is your practice you always look at it as a practice okay and we're not going to create something that's going into the Louvre we're just going to practice our colors our mixes and start training our eye to see stuff okay and we just want to be able to get close that's all we want now so and you can see that that's already drying darker and in some of the scales that we make we also make a blue scale that you see over here and you can see now even on you look at the blue scale here I'm not a nine at that bottom there I'm not I'm too dark and but I am it is pretty darn close to what I want to be it's up there seven or so what I want to be up at the top um, I could go a, a touch darker but it is pretty darn close to what I have here but it could be if I wanted to be absolutely 
perfect. And I could go a little bit darker. Now, when you're a beginner, you won't see that subtle little difference. You might go, oh, it looks the same to me, Dave. But as your eye becomes more ch more in tune than in hearing, it's just like, you know, when you're playing music, your ear has to hear the subtle change between the notes and what key they're playing in. Same thing's going to happen here with your eye, training your eye to see subtle little changes. So when you look at that, if you don't see at the very top, you can see uh, that blue that I'm using is right in here, see? So I could actually darken a bit at the top and lighten at the bottom. So now I have a plan. So I'm gonna take this color that's right here and I'm just gonna lighten it up right here. Now you can add a little extender if you want some longer working time. Sometimes I like to add it because it causes the colors to kinda slide along the surface and I'm gonna go a little bit lighter yet. What I gotta go up is up towards that nine. And that's a good nine right there. So I can just take that, run that right along the edge there. And this is what I like to do with a, with a, especially with a, a seascape and when I'm painting the atmosphere. I don't like it to be too wet for too long because it'll blend too much. So I like to have this kind of stuff here. And sometimes I'll just take this, now I put that color on, pinch wipe my brush like this, maybe even dirty it with a little bit of the original color and pull through like this. And that gives you your atmosphere, see? See how the color is changing, but it gives me this kind of model atmosphere look to it here, okay? And I like that. Now, so I'm up here, we have a little bit of blue, we have, and I love to mix, always constantly mix so my colors change. And we wanna go, that was my original blue there, and I wanna go a value or so darker. So just a little bit darker at the top. That's pretty, probably pretty good. There, that's probably pretty close to what's up there at the top here. Let's add just a bit of extender. You could use water just to thin it out a little bit. And just like we did on the other, we'll pull a bit of this, scrub it around a bit here. Push that right up there, here. And there you have that darker sky back up towards the top. Now, you can just dirty your brush with both of these for that medium tone and just come through a little bit more if you want. Put a little more color, a little more atmosphere. Try not to work it too much because you will destroy what we call the modeling of the color. See the modeling of the color there. So now I've got a, I've got a pretty good look to what my, uh, you know, what my photo is showing, right? Now all I gotta do is put on that horizon line uh, watercolor. So I'm gonna take, and it's darker. So we'll start right back here, almost straight color. It's way dark. And that's when you use your, your scale here. And it's gonna be down around a three or a two, which is right about what Thalo Blue is. Thalo Blue by itself is a two. And this is where I'll just grab my, this is the way I like to do it. I'll grab that, but you could use tape. You could dry that, put some tape on or something like that. And I like to set it like this and just use the chisel of my brush and I pull it like this, just the chisel of that fusion, which is really nice. And I pull it like this a couple of times and it'll blur the edge just ever so slightly. And it gives you a real nice, nice edge there. But I can run my finger or the brush, but I have some little broken edges that it still get, it has a lot of distance to it and I really like like it right in there. And so if I wanted that, I could run that brush again and it would break that up right in there. But I think I'll leave it this time because it does give you a, a pretty good look of what that's gonna look like there, do you see? And But that's your choice as an artist. Sometimes I like to really blur it. Now I'll just add a little extender to this just cause I like the way it, that feels. Maybe model this with a a little bit of color here and we'll just run right up by that and we'll start to and I don't want to use super long strokes because I like the movement that comes with the brush here so I'll just start to pull some of this down sometimes the light color from the board will shum through a little bit that just adds interest into the painting here okay and it will push some of that other color right in here model that up a bit Okay, and I'm just gonna, you can add water. I'll just use water this time. You can mix that water and extender and stuff like that together. Well, I'll just start pulling some of this color down. And sometimes I just like it to be very thin, or even where I'm gonna paint the beach. 
because I get a crossing of the colors. That'll be all part of your individual technique. I don't, when I paint, and for those of you that are beginners, I don't always like to paint things really clean with lines. I like colors to you know, to go over into the next, what we call passage, into the next area of color, so that the, the you get a crossing of your colors. And I like that. And that just, it, it works a lot better. So I'm gonna leave a few little streaks like this, because that's just gonna help me with the look of my water, just leaving those few little streaks. So, and you can put clouds, I show other things in there, but you can put clouds and stuff in there and that works really well. Now, the fun part begins. Let's start finding some of our colors. So, now we have to get in here and find this color. We have blue, we have a lot of blue here, so let's just go into that first. This is more of a tertiary gray. It's not like if I mixed up, if I just took my blue here, a little bit of blue and black and white, and I mixed this gray, and sometimes it's really good to have a gray. Just make a gray out here so you can look when you're matching, when you're color matching and stuff, so you can look at that color compared to your gray. And you can see this is yellower, and it's actually, you know, and I know beaches and stuff like that, it's actually a touch orange uh, to it as well. And I'll show you that. So if I add, it looks kind of like it's going to be a yellow. So if I add yellow in there, this is going to go a little bit greenish almost, okay, here. And let's lighten that back up again. So it's not, but it's not quite there. See, it's a little bit greenish from that right there. And so what you're actually looking at, just like you're looking at here, and this is why you got to train your eye. You're actually looking at an orange. So we'll add some red right in here to this color and a little bit of light here. And you'll see that I'm starting to get closer to it. I got that blue that keeps coming out and pushing that green back. But let's get a little bit more orange into this here and a little more light here. And you'll see now I'm getting closer to that color. Just, you see, what do you see? It's probably just a touch green. Does that make sense? And when you want to drive that green into the wheel more towards the gray, what color do you grab? The orange. But you could, if that's not quite, orange isn't quite doing it, okay? So you're, we're right in here. If the orange is not quite doing it, what's this going to do? It's going to go this way. So you may want to reach over and grab a little bit of your violet and drive it this way and this is going to be trial and error to teach your your eye so i might come up here and grab just a tiniest bit here of violet into this boy that blue i'm going to rinse that blue out for a second i got a lot of it there from the water and when you're doing finite and teaching color a little too much of that can really interfere so we might want to add maybe even a little red and a little bit of the violet here to this that's too much but we're professional we can get around that but you'll see I am that little bit of blue little bit of violet now I'm closer to that color let's just put a little bit of that color right there you can see I just need to be a little bit lighter here especially since I'm using acrylic I should be lighter because it's going to dry a little darker now we put that color on there and you see I have that color see that's what it is so, and it's gonna dry darker now. Watch as it dries. You can see it's drying darker. So that means I really need to be a little bit even lighter yet. So that's what you, you see on that. So when you're driving that yellowish kind of color to the inside, maybe it's a little bit too much green, you get rid of any kind of green cast at any time with a red. But that red may be coming from a violet or it may be coming from a red orange. You don't know sometimes until you train your eye, okay? So I'm gonna add just a touch of extender here and we'll come in here like this and this is gonna be, and look at that, that beautiful color of that beach and you can see that's the color that's coming in on that beach there, see? So we've, we've nailed that here. So we'll grab that, we'll push that right in here and we'll drop it right up into our water and that'll help us get some transparency and stuff like that and the look of real thin you know sh uh, shore water and stuff you know real real thin stuff now over here it gets a little lighter and a little warmer so we'll just pick up a little more white maybe a bit more yellow maybe a bit more of our warm orange here push that into the color here 
and get lighter here, lighter yet. And we'll drop that in right in here. See, it's lighter. It's, and we could probably do it so you can see it a little better here. But I'll push, there we go. Push that in. And you can see that's that lighter, warmer color right in here. Let your colors kind of model and work together here. We're painting impressionistic here. There we go. Just like that. And so now we've got the water, we've got the beach, and look at the beautiful colors here on that. And it goes into that beach really nice. And along the water's edge, when you see the water's edge, start looking at your photo when you see that water's edge right in here, you see more of that violet. So we've got to make a nice light violet. It's got to be violet. So we've got to head over to our violet and we'll add the water and the light color to it. And we'll look at that violet. Start to teach your eye to see the violet. Where is that violet compared? How close is to that? It's pretty close. This is a little bit dark. You know, and when I look at a violet like this, I look, is the violet more red or is it more blue? And I'm pretty much pretty close to it right here. So that's a, a real good kind of violet color. And that's going to, violet colors usually come in right along the wet areas of the sand. And so we'll push that right in there. And that's what I do when I go out to the beach and I lived at the beach for 30 years and I go out and watch at the beach. I look at the colors of the sand, what happens, wet sand, light sand, and you know, what happens to them here. So that violet will go right in there. That'll play real good against some of that other color. So that'll go in there and then we'll get these blue green waters and all that kind of stuff in there. And you might want to you know, vary some of these other tones, just grab some of this, just kind of push it around. But that's what an artist is looking at when we're out there and we're casting our eye and we're looking at that. And a lot of artists will say, well, go out there and we'll paint plain air, go out into nature and paint it. And that's very true. You go out into nature and you paint it there so that you can uh, um, really get a good feel for the actual colors as opposed to just looking at a photo. But when you're starting like this, looking at a photo is an okay way to do it. Now, I've got, I'm going to rinse that color out pretty good here for a minute because I got a drip that's right up here. So I just want to take care of that. Okay. And uh, so we got some violet in there. Now we got some other colors. There's going to be some blue greens, some beautiful blue greens. We'll, then we'll go put those rocks in. But blue greens, maybe a little bit of violets and stuff into those. We're going to find those colors coming right in here like this. So I'm going to just pull those across. We're going to do this impressionistically. I'm going to paint this kind of fast because I want this to be a beginning and a color study. So. I start to look at this. I start to look at my photo as I see where those other colors are coming in here. And I'll start putting those in. A little bit more blue-green, little darker tones right in there. Boom. Right up where that point of that, uh, that, uh, that little peninsula is going to be there, that little point of rock. Maybe a bit darker on my horizon line there. And I'll pull that through. These are all stuff you but try not to pull big long ones. Try to keep them shorter and crossing like this so you get that that modeling of the water that is going to, you know, give you that idea of what's going on with the um you know with the the sun and how the the waves and the colors of that in the waves. So I start picking apart some of these colors and see I like this kind of stuff to happen right there. It doesn't have to be wet. You know, those of you that, like, if you use the hair, just that starts to dry up. Sometimes I'll take just a wet brush and run through it. And let me show you that because we're supposed to be learning. So water is your solvent, guys. Water is your solvent. So when I was an oil painter, if I wanted to move something after it tacked up, I would put a little solvent, a little thinner into my brush. And so let's say I want to, I just put a little bit of water into my brush and I want to work these colors together. See, water will do that. Real, water in my brush will work those colors together, even though they're starting to dry. Water will do it very easy because water is your solvent. And with the Heritage Acrylics, water is your solvent for several hours. So you have several hours to do that, that you can come back and just soften an edge just with a little bit of water. But uh, let's come in. Let's take some of this beach color. We've got to get it a little bit more. We've got to get it uh, a little bit more dirty kind of brownish color. And a good brown color is a green and a red or a blue and an orange. 
but I'll make a green here. We'll get more yellow into that and the red and I'll start to push that together and I'll start to get these brownish kind of tones that you're going to see here. Now, they'll be a bit lighter. Let's see where we are, whether we're too green or too red. Now, you can see right now when you look at that, what do you see? I'm too green. Does that make sense? So what do I have to add? More red. I have to get a little more red and that's too much, Dave. <laughs> Do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you get excited to get that in there. So I have to add just a tiny bit more blue and green and stuff into that. And then let's lighten that up here. And let's see where we are now. Now we're a lot closer right there. And again, we're acrylic, so we might even want to lighten up just a bit more. And let's go down. Let me take this paint out of this brush a little bit here so I don't waste all of that. You could use your knife. I pulled out my knife to show you guys some knife stuff here too because you could use your knife. We could use a, this is a Liquitex number no. five knife. All the links for everything that I use is in the, um, is in the uh, video description down below. But you could do this with a knife and knife painting is a lot of fun. You come in here and just grab some of this and we'll pull that across, maybe pull that angle there just a bit here. And I'll let some of that blue even go into it. That's okay. There. And it starts to put in some of that, uh, the shape here. And that's what I'm looking for is just the shape of those rocks right there. What they're going to be. And I can cover up that blue or I can leave it. Knife painting is just, matter of fact, let's do quite a bit of the knife painting here. I do like knife painting. Now, so I'll put some of this in. Let's vary that tone. Let's just go grab some of this, maybe grab. And this is what I call model. So I don't, I don't put on a perfect tone. I got different stuff going on here. And you can just lay in different colors like this here. Okay. And that'll help give you the impression of stuff going on there. Let's lay in a little more light here. Okay some light colors and stuff. And sometimes when you get a build up of paint, it starts to get a little hard or difficult to do that. And so uh, it's best to let that dry for just a few minutes and then we can come back and work that again. But you don't wanna work it too much or you'll blend it too much. Up at the top is a little bit of greenish kind of color up there. And so I'll tone that down kind of greenish maybe a little bit of the red in there to gray that brown that up a bit more and you can just pull that right along that top and down just a bit just give the give the impression you know we're not painting it perfect we're getting the impression of it I could have a little bit more up at the top now if you're going to be an impressionist don't try to copy. So right now in my mind, all the years that I painted realism and tried to you know, get that copy in, I'd go in there and say, oh, I need some more green at the top. But if you're an impressionist and you like the mark that you already have, you don't need to come in there and do it again because you're going to screw it up. So, and that's just, an, that's just part of painting. You're going to do that. So that's a pretty good mark right there. I like that. It, is it exactly like what you see over there? No. But it's pretty close. See, it, it captured the main essence of it. And that's pretty good. And I may want to put a, let's go a little bit of violet here. A little darker. Violet is one of your dark colors. And let's just, a dirty violet, tertiary violet. And let's just run a bit of that right along the water's edge down there. So it looks like rocks right by the water there. A little bit of that. You'll see just a touch of that in here right down there along the water's edge there. And how much you do, that's up to you, okay? Again, I'm gonna put just a bit of that edge of that tip of that little point there, right like that little. So using the knife here is really kind of fun. So you could use a knife and you, can use, you could do this with a brush as well. Now, so, one of the other tones you see here, see now, so that's kind of yellowish warm. This one's more gray. Do you see it more gray right there? Okay. So to get this more gray, we can actually physically add, since we have black and white, we can physically add more gray. Or you can go to a gray made from blue and orange or something like that. But you can just take this, add this gray color right into here. 
a little bit of white, model that up, and you'll see you're right there, see? Those are those colors that you see right there. Those are them, and see, that's good and modeled. So I'm just gonna grab that. I'm gonna drop right down into here, and I'm gonna add that right into there. Slightly grayer, so you can see it's not quite as warm. It could go a little bit more gray. But you can see you can start working it like this, and this is what makes the paintings really pretty, is to work this. And of course, we're not gonna, this is a good practice for us. We're not gonna take this in like I do. You can work this all the way to the end. That's, that's, what, that's up to you. Or you can practice your colors and your tones. Take a little paper towel, take some of the edges off of that. You know, it's a, it's a good way. Start to, start to paint casual. Don't try to paint perfect. Let's get a little more reddish gray into some of that, some of this yellow, orange, really, really tertiary right in there. That's real good color right in there. And just kind of work that right in there. And some of the warmth up here from the top again, down. See, I, I push and I slide. And so if I want the dark to go up, I kind of push it up. If I want to pull off some, I, I'll put some pressure on the knife and pull down. But I start getting this crossing by working it a couple of times. I start getting this crossing of the tones here in a very natural way. And so it starts to look like little points of, of rock and stuff like that that you can have out there, see? And so, you know, just, sl just subtle variations in it. A little bit of this green and some gray right up here at the top. Let's push that right up here at the top of this little guy coming down here. There we go. We could have little marks of a few marks of light, and sometimes I'll just push them in there, just touch them in there like that. So I get that little mark of light color in there, and that works pretty good. So the knife works really well. You could also use your brush, and we're gonna be painting a lot with the brush, and you'll see me hold it flat and do things. As a matter of fact, I might do some brush work up here in front. Let's go up and let's show you the brush. I'll show you the difference between that. Let's do that. Cause, and but we're gonna we're gonna do it all later on, guys. We're gonna do it all. Let's get some uh, red, some basically some orange. In landscapes, you'll have a lot of orange. So let's get some basically some orange and some greens. And what I'm looking at is these colors that are right up here. These oranges and these greens. Put those into the brush, and let's just pull down. Yeah, that's a good orange. Let's just pull some of that down right in here. That's creating. And we'll just move, see I can, I can get it's a little different look than the, than the knife. And it's good really as an artist to, to have some of these different looks or these different colors and stuff like that in there. We can take a blue and violet and a little bit of black, some of the dark colors that you're gonna see right along that edge. And see I'll push and pull, use the corner of my, of my brush. So I use it almost like a knife, but it puts in a different look to it there and uh, model this with some of this color so I can get some of these other kind of rocks in the water, some of these colors out here, down through the beach here, and just kind of, so when you're dealing with this, something like this, you just want to grab the impression of it, okay? So I don't want to paint all that perfect. I just want to grab the, the scrubby kind of impression of that. And so I just use the brush. Sometimes I'm way back. Sometimes I'm up close. And I scrub and I use the brush very much pushing down by the ferrule so it drags. So I get some of these different looks of that coming in there. And that's just going to be all kinds of interest with the beach and rocks and other things going on. So I'll take some of that. We'll push that out here. Good colors, good tones. These are hitting some of those tones. The oranges, greens, some of the tones that you start to see here, you know, in, in, that, in that water's edge there, okay? Now back, let's go back up here before we, you'll see the, the blue and then you'll see a bit of that real light color of that. Let's put some of that lighter color of the hill here. And this is the reflection of it in the water. So we want to push some of that color 
into the water as the reflection. That's nature. There's going to be a reflection of it there. Okay, and we'll want to take some of these other colors here and pull through right in here like this, real soft. And you can add a little extender so your brush slides. I just lift the pressure and let it kind of granulate in through there. And you're going to see you're starting to pick up some of those little tones that you'll see into here. We need some more violets and stuff like that. But we're starting to pick up some of those colors, those tones. And you can take out and add and, you know, this is where the impression of it comes in that I just love. And I might uh, add just a touch of extender to this and just drag a bit of this a little further up here. And I'll leave some of that mark. That's the impressionism of it that I like. And, you know, as, I, as I'm becoming an older artist, I really like impressionism. I really, really do. I love that that look of it and stuff. So, and I'll do it with the knife or I'll do it with the brush. But you can see this brush like this gives you all of this interest, and you know the knife gives you a lot of interest there as well. But the brush just gives you all kinds of interest as well. So, this is the number ten flat, and I, that's the one I like. The same one I painted the flowers with last time. Now let's come back in. We have some. And we look at this, we have some light aqua kind of, I might have to get out a little more white. And we'll add a bit of extender to this. We have this light aqua kind of color coming right along through here. And, you know, I'll vary the blue. I'll put a little bit more blue into my brush and paint right into that here. And not too long a strokes, but just let some of that come through like that and starts adding some of that movement of the ocean in there. Let's pick up a bit more here. That's pretty good. Let's get a bit more blue, little bit of extender with that. Thin it out a bit. Drop through. See, I like to do this several times. And in a big painting, I will work an area like this several times back and forth and stuff like that. I'm gonna put out just a bit more white so it looks like I know what I'm doing here. Boom, okay. And we'll put little, I call these the little sparks of colors of waves and I'll take just an edge like this. See that light edge there? And I'll turn the brush so I'm using just a bit of that edge and I'll put in little sparks like the waves coming up maybe ideas of them, you know, hitting against the rocks and stuff like that right out here. Maybe just a mark or so of some of that so you can see just a bit of that of that light color. Sometimes I use just ever so small. And well, let me just show you this too. An easy way to do that is with your knife. Just take your knife and just take up just a bit of that color at the knife. Roll your knife so you're right by that the, the edge of it and just draw that edge there. See that knife makes a, a really nice finite line there and can start to give you like little waves. Like if I wanted to come back here and get a nice like a little splash of a wave here at the point, I can just do that with my knife really easy. There's not really one right in there but I might put just a little bit because this is my painting. Just a little bit of something right in there, see? And I have that look. I can take this knife, just tap your brush into it, tap your knife into it, maybe pick up a little blue so that the color, you see, you can see a little blue in there. So the color isn't perfect white, so you're going to get a little bit of blue out of it as well. And you can use that, and you can see that little bit of blue starts to make it look like a wave. And you let what happens happen here. Let's get a little bit, bit bigger. I love to do texture in this kind of stuff there. So you can see those do just really nice little waves. Now, there's more violets in there uh, in the actual photo. So let's just take some blue and some this and some of our earlier violet. And that's kind of a pretty little violet, maybe a bit more of the violet, red violet in there. So more of a red violet instead of a blue violet. and that I can see that in that photo, we'll run some of this in there. Might need a little bit lighter here. Let's take a look. 
See, I'm looking for, in this photo, I'm looking for that color right in there. See that? So and I'm real close. And, you know, sometimes I just get close. And I don't try to have, I don't try to make it perfect. I just get it close. And that's a real pretty color right in there. And uh, work maybe a, a line or two of that dark too. Just to give that interest in there. But I can come back. I, I don't mind that it destroyed some of the light. You might even come back even more with a little bit of a light violet kind of wave in there too. And I don't mind that that took some of that out. So it, it's okay, in other words. It is okay. Now let's put some of that violet maybe a bit lighter. Get some more white with that. Maybe it's slightly more violet. Slightly different. See, and I like this. I like sometimes to take a bit of that blue and do this, model that. I scrape the knife there, pick it up, and I'll pull that right in here like that. Now, don't get all afraid. You might go, oh, I just ruined it. No, you didn't. Pretty close, but no, you didn't. You didn't at all. There's a couple ways to do that. First, of all, I'll wipe the knife, and I can push the knife and start pushing those colors together, see? And so wipe your knife so you get off the excess out of it and start pushing it like this, very flat, and that'll work those together. And if it doesn't work really well, like maybe that blue is really, that blue starting to dry up, what do you do? You can write me a comment on the video or you can think, what is my solvent? It is water. What did I do before? I could do this, push it in really soft with a brush, or I can dip my knife in a little bit of water and just leave it in that, right like that, and pull through like that. Now look at how that softens it very quickly, right in, and I get this nice impressionistic look right there with those violets and the water and everything starting to, uh, you know, come in there and stuff. I'm a little heavier violet than what they are, but that I don't, I like it. And maybe I'll take a little bit of that light violet and that water. You know, just run right a little edge right here. Like maybe that's just a little bit of the water's edge. And I like that little tiny hit of brighter blue over there. So I'll grab a little blue, a little brighter blue right in there and push that in right there like that. Maybe uh, a bit of a splash. So I grab a touch of white. And we'll hit that right in there, that little spark, those little sparks of color, you know. Now, the edge of my rock there that was gray kind of disappeared, so let's just put a little more gray into there. We'll get a, you can go black and white, a little blue and a little bit of red here. Get yourself a nice gray. It doesn't have to be the same gray. Matter of fact, it's prettiest if it's not. It's a little bit different. And this is, not, you know, just model that. See, that's a nice gray modeled up. And let's just put a little more gray right out here on those rocks there, just like that. And maybe a touch lighter here, just a bit, boom, just hit that here. You could use your brush, you know, this is yours. You can use your brush. Let's push just a bit of those light hits and stuff there. Maybe grab a bit of that right down in here into these rocks and stuff down there. Good impressionism of it, right? Yeah, good impressionism. Maybe a little darker violet right there that helps pop that out. And, you know, you can smooth it out. You could use your, your, your um, brush in there. You know, I'm just going to move my finger in there. I don't feel like it's a painting until I've touched my hand in it a little bit sometimes. Let's take a little bit of that lighter blue right in there. Nice little stroke of that. You get those. See, I, I want to capture some of that beautiful movement of those colors right in there. And I get that violet and a blue-green, which is just our phthalo and the white. See? Moving some of that in there. Let's just Toss a bit of that in there. Look at how pretty that is, see? Makes it look like you know what you're doing. Just drop that right in there. You got some of that nice coloring in there. Sets all of that up so that you can grab some of these colors here, a little violet, a little white right here like this. Let's add just a touch of extender so it thins it out just a bit. And let's just pull that light right there, boom. 
just like that, and we'll widen it out a bit, pulling back just a bit. This is going to create those waves coming in and out here. That wave coming in and out there, just like that. Maybe a bit more light, a bit of violet, a little bit more white here. Like this. Pull that back like that. Get some of that movement in there. I like that. Now, you can, you know, add more. You can add less. You can, you know, but I'm modeling right here. Modeling means I'm not mixing. Modeling right between my whites and some of those violets and stuff as I push some of this on here. Here like that. Get rid of that little bit there. It's kind of dripping down there a bit. There we go. And... You know, any uh, sometimes just a tiny little touch of those whites just to hit as a, you know, the light wave. Sometimes I'll push them back a little bit. You know, just, yeah, just let that sit in there. And that works really well. We can have some smaller just with the point of the knife here. Some smaller little touches of the light here. Just like this. There we go. Pull that a bit. There. And uh, little marks. Little bits out here, little marks. Try not to make just a straight line. Move the brush or move the knife around so you're not making just a straight line. Maybe a little bit more of the blue-green and the light that's up over here. On this side here, there's just a bit of a, and it's prettier when you're going from the blue greens into the blue violets here. I'll push that around a bit. That looks pretty good here. You can put a bit of violet right back in there. Just push your knife around. And what happens if it doesn't move around? What do you grab if you see? I'm just pushing my knife, flattening it out, and moving that. And a, a knife artist would call that blending, blending with the knife. It's your, what you're doing is you're softening off the edges and stuff like that. So, you know, it's um, not like traditionally blending, but you're pushing the colors together here. There we go. Just move that around like that. So we have our violet right up there. We just need some more of our light and blue-green kind of modeled together here right up by the front. Just edge of the knife slowly roll it down until you start pushing in that color and see what's very important about that is you can see a little blue a little white that's because my color right here is not mixed and I'm just picking it up and that's what's happening we'll drop just a bit of that light there just around like that now that did not quite come out the way I want it there to, so if I want to really soften it out pick up a little water and push if I feel like I've lost some of that, now there's a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a more darker color right in there than I have, just a touch more. So I'll just take some of uh, maybe yellows, some beach color, some beach grays, some of those colors, and push those right in here. And some blues, some lighter blues. Use this knife, it's very flat. Use it flat like that. Push that around. Just paint the colors. You know, don't worry about painting beautiful waves. The people will see them as waves. Paint the colors. Let's put just a bit of light right on the edge here. I'll roll it. And I'll give it a little bit more of a wave. A little bit wider wave right down here. Right into that touch into that sometimes you touch the knife you get a different look try all of our hands are different though so we're all going to do things a little bit different okay but just try it you know give it a try it doesn't hurt and especially like this this is our practice painting to see colors and stuff like that so i'm going to add just another wave over there that's a little little bit too powerful so we'll take some of it out here there we go just like that. And maybe a, a bit of the lighter yellow, yellow, gray, and light. 
uh, you know, I looked, you know, it, on my edges over here. Maybe I want to have a bit more of an edge right back there for the shoreline so it shows up a bit more. That's, a, that's an artistic call. Do you let it fade or do you let it show? That's up to you. But I'm going to bring it up, maybe a bit of yellow. Bring that up. And so a beautiful painting, you may go back through and run these colors again. And see, when I run those colors again, I get a, a little bit different, like that little spot there of that yellow. Looks pretty good. You know, so I'll get some different, different looks. And, um, you know, that's up to you, how much time and everything. I want you to practice the colors and the tones because we'll need that later on in all of our lessons. We'll need that later on as we paint. We'll need, let's put some of that right up in here. Some rocks and stuff here. Some other little tones and stuff going on. There's really nice, and we, we talked about that in the flower painting, that olive green there. And olive green is your yellow. And see, after we painted that, those those blossoms and that rosebud, we know how to make olive green now. And we push that olive green right up in there. There's a nice little spot of it, kind of a wet rock, mossy kind of a color. Get some other tones in there. Break that up a bit. There, just the color. So you see what I look for is an impressionist. I'm painting just the color. I don't have to paint it exactly. I just have to paint the color. And so now let's go back. Let's take some yellows, a little bit of reds, those lighter oranges here. A little bit more yellow here. And I'm, remember what I said in the last one. You use a lot of yellow and you lose a, use a lot of white. So like when you're buying a set, you might always want to order an extra yellow and extra white. But look what happened. I've used all my white and I've used all my yellows. The others... I have enough to paint several more paintings. But you go through, when you're painting a limited palette with the six color set, you go through a lot of white and you go through a lot of yellow. So I'm gonna grab some of this, lighten this up a bit. Look at that nice mottled color. So you can even gray some of this. Just grab some of this, move that through. Beautiful colors there. This nice knife work. And I can add a lot of interest to this painting just by pulling some of this now right up in here. And, you know, let it be like beach and rocks and stuff going on. And a knife artist would leave it just like that, all that interest like that, see? And you may want to smooth it out a bit. You know, it all depends on where you are, you know, in your painting. I love the the knife, the, what's called the optical effects and stuff like that of the knife, especially when you step that painting back. Now, if I want to soften that edge, how do I soften that edge? Let's just take our knife put it in a little water, take that water right along that edge there and just run it. Push down flat, push down pretty hard and just run it here. We'll push that right up into there like it's a little bit of sand getting right up in there. There you go, just like that, see? And so I got some good interest. I could use a touch of that light, maybe a bit more yellow right down in here. You could swoop it up like it's a beach area, going up into a beach area or something like that. You know, lots of ways to do it. I could have a bit more white. Let's just take some of this right over here. I could have a bit more white right along the edge there, hitting. Like that's a wave, and I even got a little texture there, so that looks pretty good there, you know. Really quick, okay, really, really quick. Less than an hour, a nice little fun thing. I could do more on it. If you could see that, I could put clouds on it and stuff like that. But that's a, that's a real good look. Now, there's a bigger wave right back there. Maybe I should put that in right there. Oh, let's just do it. We've got a few minutes left, not an hour yet. So let's just put that larger wave just because that's more interest. Something, when I make a wave larger, I'll pull back just a bit. Give it a little bit more power. And if it's too much power, wipe your knife. You can even you can pick up some of your blues or violets, just model that in and push right along that edge. See, you take out that power. 
You can pull back slightly, which gives the, a nice trail edge to the wave. Or if you want to blend it all off, what do you do? Take a bit of water, the solvent, right in your brush and push, right in your brush, right in your knife and push there like that. You could also pra practice doing this with, I like to do this little edge though, but practice doing this with the, with the brush as well. But, you know, create little edges, little bits here of stuff and creates little waves. I like, what makes paintings really pretty, guys, is little sparks, little edge. Do, use just the edge of that and create the little sparks of light and movement there. And that just adds so much to, uh, you know, to a painting. Like right in here, a lot of dark right in that area there. And I can create like little, little splashes of waves, just a little bit there like that just to say there's a little splash right there adds a lot okay you can also and, I'll, and you see me in other paintings and stuff back paint out which is taking a a dark color and coming back this way into a wave you'll see me i don't really think maybe i'll do it just to show you i'll take a darker color with like a brush like this and several times in a wave when i feel like okay maybe that's a little too smooth or something in there i'll come back this way and back paint like this, which gives more movement here, movement in a direction that I want that wave to go. So I'll push up like that, see? And it gives just a little more movement in the direction that I want that wave. So I might push a bit more dark right in there. So waves are really a lot of fun, but, and uh, you know, there's, I could use, and I'm, going to stop because I don't need to have all this. This is a good painting. It's a nice looking painting. I don't need to do really any more to that. That's a that's a pretty good look. Now, you could go add clouds. You can do all that kind of stuff, you know. But I think, uh, you know, overall we we captured it pretty well. We captured the the feeling of it, the essence of it, pretty quickly in about an hour. You know, we could probably put more and stuff back there on the hills and all that kind of stuff, but you get a good idea. And if you're a very beginner, keep it simple. You know, that's why I call this Paint It Simply. So we have our website, paintitsimply.com. You can go over there and read that. We're adding stuff to it. In the Paint It Simply, this is when I paint with the six colors like this. This is what I call the Paint It Simply. And I have over 500 lessons in the Paint It Simply, in videos, in, in on the online classes and stuff like that, where we work with limited colors like this and do a lot of in-depth studies. I thought it would be fun for those of you that, you know, um, want to maybe think about painting that getting into this you can get a 12 you can get a, a a six color set like this and a palette knife and a couple brushes and you can sit down and start practicing and seeing and landscapes or seascapes like this are really a lot of fun i could ooh could have a little bit i just saw that it could have a bit more more of a lighter orangey green kind of color here uh yeah something like that just pulling down right in there a bit more grasses. That's better. Just breaks it because I, I kind of put that on and forgot about it. So there. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Then you go sell it. <laughs> okay. You make a nice painting and it's really kind of quick and it's a lot of fun. But it's really good. Make yourself this color wheel so you can start to see where colors and tones start to come from. Learning your, taking your eye uh, to see tones. It's going to take a little bit of practice, but it will slowly come picking those colors off, especially if you start mixing those colors. And one reason why I started everybody out with a six color set and didn't have a whole bunch of mixes for everybody is I'm training your eye to see the tone. Now there's exercises that you do. You pull a photo like this and you start mixing and finding those colors. And that's really good to do that. Most of your colors are going to be tertiary. They're going to, you know, it might be a yellow orange that's tertiary. So you might drive it into the wheel with a little bit of a, you know, a bluish kind of color or something like that. A blue greenish kind of color, you know. There's just all kinds of ways or maybe a little blue violet into it, you know, that drive it a, not quite to a pure gray, slightly one tone or another. And that's what we're going to work on. 
We're going to paint mountains. We're going to paint birds. We're going to paint westerns. We're going to do a horse. We're going to do all kinds of stuff with a six-color set, okay? So this is just the beginning. I promised you guys that we were going to do this. Now we're off, okay? Alrighty. I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, don't forget to click like, leave a comment, and hit that little bell. when you, If you're subscribed, hit that little bell so that you know when I have another video out. And I'm going to try to have them every maybe three days or so and uh, give you time to paint this and then get ready for the next one, okay? All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one in just a couple days.